My name is Graham Campbell. I'm the councillor for Springburn Road, Royston, where we're sitting now. It's the middle of Springburn and the, the Glasgow Kelvin College. And I'm here with the young people from Achieve More Scotland because uh, you know, we're, they're an important local group. And I'm, I'm going to say a little bit about why I'm here. I'm, I'm involved in Black History Month, which you may not know, this is the brochure, and in there is a whole month's worth of activities like films, screenings, museums, walks, walking tours around the city of Glasgow, looking at the heritage and history of, the, of this country in Scotland and this city, but putting a black perspective on it, because a lot of black people are involved in the history of, of this city, and that's why we have it to remind people that that's the case. A lot of people don't know this stuff. They don't know Glasgow's connection to empire, to slavery. And so why that's important? Well, from my perspective, it's important to have that because black people have been in Scotland from time and want to get over to people who, especially people who've come to Scotland recently, that African people have been here always. And they have been, you know, we've had African communities living here for hundreds of years. And there's a very important foundation black people who have been in Scotland who've made a real contribution to the society. And one of the things I do, as well as being an elected politician, before I was that, I was, I was active as a community activist in this community here. Um, I lived in Sight Hill for 10 years. I was a community activist around housing, um, you know, and around refugee rights, which is how I know your coach there. So, yeah, we, we've, we went one day, me and your coach, we were with a number of African footballers and Asian footballers from various teams and we actually went into the Scottish FA and into an anti-racist charity and we had to actually go and tell them look we're having problems with racism in the way football is being played because we're finding there's more abuse in, in when you go and use facilities there's a problem when you know players are aggressive and they want to do you down they actually say things and that is creeping into the game and we were saying well, there's other di discriminations we're facing that we're generally poorer, we're less likely to be well employed, so we can't afford the pitch fees in the same way most other communities can. So it's, we're disadvantaged in accessing facilities, which is kind of why Achieve More Scotland kind of exists, it's to try and overcome some of that inequality. So we went and told them what our experience was, and thankfully the SFA kind of listened to us and said, okay, wait, we need some equality, so we're going to set up some scholarships, we're going to set up some training, we're going to create some equalities officers. So that was in 2011, but they didn't really follow through with it. <laughs> but at least they listened to us, and the point was that we, we told them. And we challenged racism where we found it in, this, in the game. So that led me to sort of eventually set up a, an Andrew Watson uh, comp competition. Now, if you don't know who Andrew Watson is, does anybody know Andrew Watson? I know. You know. <laughs> Um, but, but I didn't know about him before 2009. Andrew Watson was uh, uh, an African-Caribbean man who was a footballer in the 1880s and the 1890s. So when Scottish football was first founded in 1872, it was the second oldest football association in the world, and Scotland is the second oldest uh, international team in the world. But if I told you that the first internationals some of the first internationals ever between Scotland and England were captained by a black man for Scotland and that that man was the first black player to play in the English FA Cup, the Scottish FA Cup, the English League, the Scottish League. He was the first gentleman professional black player in the world. He became the first international black captain of a country in the world. He captained Scotland three times and twi twice of those three times it was victories against England. Home and away. <laughs> Uh, we could do with him now kind of thing. So Andrew Watson was actually one of the best footballer of his, of his day. He was, his dad was from Guyana. He was born in, in Guyana in South America. He went to Edinburgh and Glasgow universities. He was, a, he, was, he was the son of a wealthy man. So he had the advantage of being upper class. But he was a groundbreaking player. Uh, he played for Queen's Park. That was his club. Uh, Queen's Park obviously owned Hamden up until recently. So he was really big in the game. Uh, and, and because he was before the television era, there's no camera images of him. We got photographs of him. Mm -hmm. So we named the Football League after him. We named a, a cup after him. I run the Football League that's named after him. And the point of it is that we want to remember that black people have always played the game in Scotland. There has never been a time in Scotland where they've not played football with black people in it. 
So that should make people think differently. If they knew their proper history, then those Scottish people who we play football with wouldn't behave like that. If they knew that, then they knew how wrong it would be to be saying racist things to us on pitches you know, or from the crowd. So that's why I want, it's important for us to know the history. So if you knew that, you feel empowered that when you go on the pitch, I'm here, I've always been here, my people have always been here. And Scotland needs to accept that and know it and own it. So that's one of my motivations for doing Black History Month. So I'm originally, as you might tell, I'm not Glaswegian born, I'm from London, uh, but I'm from Jamaican family, Jamaican background. And uh, I grew up in London in the 70s in a climate which is quite racist. And uh, by the 80s, when I got to adulthood, I decided to take some political action. So I got involved in community campaigning, anti-racism stuff, and ended up in this little group here. <laughs> I've got some favourite documents from my youth, youth days. In, when I was formative, this film, Malcolm X, came out. And it was really influential in my thinking, because I thought Malcolm X was a very inspiring individual, um, very brave and fighter for black people's rights and dignity. And he very much inspired these guys called the Panthers. And the Panthers were... Uh, an African-American group who were really strong around black people's civil rights and self-defense against racist policing and against discrimination with the courts and the jobs in the 1960s. And they were the most radical edge of what's called the civil rights movement for black equality in the States. And they were socialists, they were community activists who collectively organized stuff and that attracted me, that message. And that one of their founders came over to, to the UK to Brixton where I was staying and he spoke to a big meeting of 500 people and it was very inspiring because we were just at that point trying to tackle racial attacks and racial incidents. Mm -hmm. This is just before Stephen Lawrence was murdered and that's when I really got very active because I, I got involved in the Panther in those days and we campaigned, we've organised the first demonstration against the racists who killed him. And, uh, we went around nightclubs, we flyed things, we, we did things in an old school way. But what, you know, black people were political, but they weren't necessarily politically active, marching on the streets or demonstrating or campaigning. And to get them to do so, we had to go to our, our young people in nightclubs. We had to actually go at three in the morning, speak to people in the queue while they're going for their taxis. And we said, look, if this boy can be murdered on the streets, any one of us could be. We have to take an action about it. And that was the first demonstration against that boy's killing. And that boy's killing ended up being really important in British politics because we've got anti-racism laws now, which come from the inquiry into Stephen Lawrence's murder. So we've got some rights out of that struggle. So it was a really informative time in my political thinking. So I think if I hadn't been doing that, there's no way I would have ended up being, you know, standing for election or, or being a political representative because I had that background. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's me, so I'm Graham, I'm from Glasgow now, mm -hmm. I'm Jamaican and I'm English as well. <laughs> so I'm going to start with you and you come this way. <coughs> I'm Mahdi Bahrami from Iran, I stay in Glasgow now, 12, 13, 12 years, yeah. Um, actually I've been studying this college for five years and I'm coaching most of the boys. been involved with black and ethnic minority for years. For my own experience, I was very proud to meet Sir Jeff Palmer. He made me very, very, gave me inspiration. A guy came from Jamaica here. And he, the story he described himself, his life was actually catchable and eyes catching. And my tears come. When I heard he came here by ship and his family doesn't have enough clothes to give him and he used the newspaper around himself to feed warm. Then he came here and in age of 15, he started to go to a school. And then he came to the whiskey industry and he made himself very, very big man. And he also very helped to the black and ethnic society. I wonder if you guys go and search his name there. 
One other thing is the job you've done. It's make me proud again as kind of the ethnic minority coach in this country. The guy you mentioned is in the first black players ever played in, in that century. And Watson. His picture before your activity wasn't in a Scottish film hall in Hampton Park. He's part of his story for this country. So it doesn't matter what color he is and what his background. If he done something good for Scotland, he should get respect for that. And I'm sure hundred African and black people and Jamaican done many things good in Scotland. I hope in point of my view in football, hopefully one day this country, Scotland and SFA especially and Glasgow Life gave opportunity to this talent to be like England. If you look at England national team, how many black players they have, how many we have in Scotland. There should be some reason behind that and we have to fight with this reason to give, because equality means to give opportunity to everybody to show themselves and achieve to do what they want. So, um, I think it means a lot as in like, um, just what black people have been through, what black people have achieved in the past, things that we don't know. Like, as, you, as you've told us about <coughs> a black player that used to play for Scotland, the first black player to play for Scotland, we didn't know these things. So, just, it's just like, when I hear a word of black history, it just makes me think of the things that black people have achieved that have never really been spoke about. You sir? Uh, I think for me, it means kind of like uh, both empowering and, and recognizing uh, people. So you'd empower the, the generation of kind of like kinda my age to kind of like get up and like uh, actually like do do more to do with their history. So kinda like uh, uh, learn the history of their family, learn the history of their culture, and then uh, I use that in the community. Also, kind of to kind of like recognize people who have kind of like like, like been there and kind of like have. Kind of fought hard to kind of like get equality in the community, so kind of better both for me. And yourself, what would what, the word mean to you? For me, it means uh, black people who have stood up in history, who have impacted on uh, black lives everywhere. Right, well, I kind of know what it means to you. Um, whoa! Awkward. <laughs> 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 So uh, that was perfectly timed. Right. So, so if I ask the second question, um, could you name what, what? Could you give me a, a black figure in history that you think is important that, is to, to call out the name of anybody? Nelson Mandela. And why would you say he was important? Because he fought for the rights of black people in South Africa, and because he was persecuted for it, and because he uh, he won eventually. And yeah, kind of, uh, he became the president, and yeah, so, uh, like, I, like for me, kind of very, very inspirational to me personally. And the fact that Glasgow kind of was the first country to kind of like uh, uh, welcome him uh, when he was kind of in prison, kind of see that he's kind of like a, a very important figure uh, was kind of like pretty, pretty cool to me. Do you know the story about how it came to happen? Uh, well, there, there was a documentary on it just literally last week, yeah. uh, just at the beginning of Black History Month, and um, the, there was a movement in called uh, it's of solidarity with the movement in South Africa. It was called the anti-apartheid movement. Mm -hmm. I was a member of it when I was young, and what it used to do is regularly pick it outside the racist white government's offices. You know, they had a, an embassy in London in the middle of Trafalgar Square, but here in Glasgow, they had uh, an office in what's now the back of Goma, you know, in, in Royal Exchange Square, so Stock Exchange Square, they call it. Mm. so their consulate was there, so that's where white South Africans from the racist country had to go and get their passports, mm. and they were, they were there uncontested for many years until the anti-apartheid movement started to challenge them, and they started to start have protest outside, and eventually the city had the bright idea of giving Nelson Mandela the freedom of the city, and the anti-apartheid movement asked for the square where the embassy was in Glasgow to be renamed. So we have Nelson Mandela yeah. Place, so yeah. right? Well, it was the first place in the world to be named after Nelson Mandela mm -hmm. in Europe. I don't think it was the first in the world, but it was certainly the first in Europe. And uh, 
it was very provocative. What it meant was that the people who worked in the South African racist embassy had to receive their mail with Nelson Mandela place on it. And the postman in Scotland refused to deliver or handle their mail unless it was correctly addressed. <laughs> so if they didn't write Nelson Mandela face on their address, they wouldn't deliver it. <laughs> so the South African consulate wouldn't get their mail. Mm -hmm. And eventually, after about two years, they, they, they closed the consulate. Mm -hmm. So they closed it down. Um, now Glasgow did that in 1981. And a lot of uh, uh, cities followed suit in giving Nelson Mandela the freedom of the city. So there's a whole documentary about that. I've been an activist in this stuff for a very long time, and obviously I had to learn about Malcolm and about Martin, Martin Luther King, and, you know, their policies and theories and thoughts. And what I think is really important about Martin Luther King is that he was actually quite a radical politically. I mean, politically he was in favour of massive social change. He wanted not just to remove the inequalities between black and white people legally, he wanted to move them, remove the, the social inequality. So he was not just an anti-racist, he was anti-poverty. And he was also anti-war. You know, so he was anti the Vietnam War, which was a big deal in the 60s when he was very active because America was in this huge war, killing hundreds of thousands of people, literally millions of people in Vietnam and Southeast Asia. This war went on for 20 years and the Americans poured so much money into it instead of pouring money into their poor inner cities. And that's what Martin Luther King did. He stood up against the war. He stood up against poverty and he argued that black and white people should unite in an anti-poverty radical change in America. Mm -hmm. That's really why he was assassinated. He was assassinated because he was dangerous for that reason. <laughs> you know, anybody saying, oh, actually, American capitalists, you're very greedy, you're, you're very uh, selfish, and the society that you have, he was very critical of their society and of how it was. And he said that, you know, you couldn't have freedom only with the vote. Obviously, he campaigned for black people to have the vote and to be able to exercise the right to vote. Mm -hmm. But he said you need not just to have the right to vote, you need to have someone and something to vote for. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's a very important yeah. thing that he, he yeah. argued for. And that's why I think he's still a very influential and inspirational character now. But people should read what he said. Yeah, <laughs> it's his famous thing is, I have a dream, right? You've all heard of that phrase, right? The I have a dream. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's the best speech ever made in history. You know, if you read that speech, and just to listen to how he delivers it, it's, a, it's like a big church sermon, but it's also, it's a revolutionary call to action. What he's saying is that we will get equality and we will take action to get it. He's not taking prisoners in that speech. It's not, oh, I have a dream, I'm going to be aspiring to be a doctor or a lawyer. He's not saying that. He's saying that we will gain freedom and we will take action to, to you know, political collective action to do it. So that, it's a very big radical call. When you dissect the speech, he is calling for equality. He's calling for change in the economics. He's calling for transfer of wealth. He's calling for the end of the war. It's a big speech. And that's why people should know it better.